What's up, everyone? Uh, this is roundtable number 13. Um, let's call them home gym junkies. We've got Chip, a.k.a. Big Jam Exerciser, Eric, a.k.a. Eccles Basement Gym, Keith, No Wine Cellar, and then Jason, Man Who Parks in Gym. Thanks again for hopping on. Our hey, pleasure. Thanks, all right, let's 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 roll right into that first question. So what was the best product released in 2022? I'll jump in on this one first, I guess. Um, kind of went back and looked. I think I looked at your 2022 list, Jake. Um, I definitely think it was the Vendetta Strength uh, mm. Jammer Lever Arm Adapters. Um, I just think that solves, from what I see, the biggest problem with lever arms that you hear about, it's just set up time. You know, it takes a lot of time and effort to set them up with spider arms or safety straps um, and just the ability to set up quickly uh, with those brackets and or store them out of the way with the brackets. I think that just solves a major problem. It actually adds them, probably added a lot of value to a lot of people's lever arms. Yeah, I know he's working on getting those for the two by threes here soon. So maybe I'll only, uh, be able to hop on that train sooner rather than later. Well, selfishly, and I have to disclose this, um, I am 100% totally biased in my um, in my best product <laughs> in 2022 here. I think it's the Bear Steel Equipment <laughs> Mod Bar, not only because I invented that motherfucker, but um, you know, it made the list. I think it was it was maybe like 22 out of 25 or something like that. Um, but it really is a, a great bar. Um, you know, the it's it's the neural on it's really great. It's it's the good diameter. You can do a little bit more than just pull downs and and curls and stuff with it. Um, so I think that was the best product that was released. Um, and again, I'm being 100% and totally honest and completely biased also. Um, and I also refuse to blow the fucking Aries any harder than it's going to be done. <laughs> For me, I just went with, uh, I grabbed the uh, AB4100, which I'm sitting on now. Uh, I had a real crappy bench before that. So, I mean, it just makes sense for cost and how easy it is to move around and still pretty sturdy. It just kind of fits that unicorn area for a lot of people too. So that's, that was my pick. So I went out with a little uh, curveball. I didn't really, I didn't really have any firsthand experience with anything that came out in 2022. Um, so uh, the one thing that I did buy that kind of was released in 2022 was the uh, executive fit, the, uh, sorry, the fake weight plate uh, wall display. Play. He had those on. He was trying to sell them on Facebook a few years ago, but at like a like a three hundred dollar price point or something. And he came out with like a I'll consider it a new product because it was a new material. So he, his his price was literally a third of what it was when I you know first came across him on Facebook years ago. So I think I was able to get that for a hundred dollars delivered, and now it's like one hundred fifty delivered. But it's still if you just want to add a little flair to your gym, I think it's pretty awesome. You know, I it's, it's not it's it's still in the uh, home gym space, maybe not equipment, but I'm gonna take it. All right, so no Aries, no Athena, no trap bars. All right. <laughs> That's probably what uh... <laughs> What a list, guys. <laughs> I don't have any of that stuff, so I'm not That's the best. All right, how about, how about uh, <clears throat> companies that disappointed you last year the most? Well, I can go a two-part on that. I mean, obviously... For me, the one that disappointed, I mean, Titan was saying all year they were going to release all this stuff. And they had a couple products, and there's nothing really jumping out, you know, making everybody buy now. You know, they waited too long till this year to do the trap bar. So they kind of fell behind there. And then my other one was, it was kind of disappointing, not a disappointment. And I brought up 1211 closing. You know, it's, just kind of sucked for them that they closed. That was kind of disappointing, but not really their fault. So I had to throw that in there too. Yeah, I kind of went along the same lines. Well, not with the Titan thing. I didn't give a fuck about Titan. But I thought about it and I'm like, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really think I have like super high expectations for equipment companies. And I thought about some of the like easy targets like Kabuki and that crazy fucking business model that they have. Um, but it's just become so normal. It's almost almost dumb to even expect anything more from them than crazy 
shipping lead times and fucked up uh, finishes on their bars and stuff like that. Um, but I guess as I was thinking about this, like the Uber nerd in me was maybe less disappointed in any single company, but just as a whole kind of disappointed in situations like, for example, um, Ghost kind of throwing in the towel, Rogue taking over the brand, which was cool. And I, and I understand, I mean, I've got nothing but respect for, for Tim and, and why he did that. Um, and it's, it's really, on one hand, it's really cool that Rogue kept the, the brand and whatnot, but at the same time, it's like everything that was Ghost kind of gets lost in that, and it's now just a, a Rogue product, or, or if Kabuki ends up following suit, uh, a, a Rogue product with a Ghost logo on it or a Kabuki logo or something like that. It's not quite the same thing, um, so I guess maybe the sensitive side of me is just a little bit disappointed in that reality, but it is what it is. You know, at least we still get the cool little ghost symbol on our rogue stuff now. So I'll jump in. Uh, I actually am going to pick rogue as my uh, biggest disappointment. Um, I uh, did that. The couple couple specific things that hit, hit home with me was when I ordered my RM3. They uh, the, the safety traps, one of them was fucked up, and it took them literally like a month to get me a new one because there was just a disconnect with the first person I sent an email to. They didn't understand what was wrong, and I was literally waiting for weeks. And then you know they finally eventually was like, oh, we'll send you out the right product. And uh, I was missing literally like some monster bolts to put it together. I was able to steal bolts from the uh, the rogue display thing and stole those bolts to actually put the rack together. But it was just frustrating. And then you know they did the the stupid thousand pound challenge where you have to literally take a video of weighing every single one of your things i get that's not i mean that's kind of home gym related because it was geared towards people doing that in a home gym it just you know kind of completely went against the whole home gym competition that was like for the people and they wanted like money to you know instead of helping you know raise you know instead of giving money away they were taking money and then giving you a shitty product basically and then i think it might have been 21 it came out but the fucking art that those aggro bars still piss me off with the stupid cartoon so i that's that's rogue is does it just i still love rogue and i'll buy rogue you know buy from rogue but overall you know the fact that i gave him like three grand that year and i was very disappointed overall uh, i don't know if you get to call yourself rogue when they ask are you rogue <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing though guys is so for me i mean this was a very difficult question because like i learned a long time ago that if you have very low expectations you can't be disappointed uh so i set very low expectations for everybody it sounds like something anyway Sounds like something your wife would say. <laughs> Touche. Uh, no, but I just kind of went into this year. You know, I think that a lot of the smaller companies did a lot of cool things this year. You know, so I think, you know, so big companies kind of did what they were going to do, but really, I didn't really have any expectations. So I don't think anybody really disappointed me. It's a very diplomatic answer, I know. But I think when it's all said and done, it was a better year for new and cool equipment than it was for not. So I think that's a win for everybody. Who's your favorite small company? Uh, definitely surplus strength. Um, just getting to know Jason um, over the last year and a half or so, you know, through Instagram, obviously. Um, he's just a really good guy. And I think the stuff they're doing there is just, it's really cool. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's change the subject to what's number <laughs> one on your home gym wish list or just basically something that you think you'll buy next or this year? Man, my number, well, my wish list is ridiculous, right? I mean, I don't even lie. Like, so Prime released this new like leg extension, leg curl combo machine thing in their Hyperline just a couple of days ago. And it's fucking beautiful, but I mean, it's also really expensive. I mean, it's like fully selectorized. Um, it has the, that cam system that makes everybody jizz their pants, you know, where you can like, um, the same thing that's on their plate loaded version. Um, I think they call it like smart strength or something like that. But you get to basically adjust the resistance curve so that the load is either at the front end, the middle end, or the back end of the lift, or somewhere in between. You can, you can kind of intermix those also, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but I think it costs about the same. I, I don't think. I know exactly what it costs because I got a fucking quote for it just so I could like put it to rest, you know? It's like the same that I paid for this rack. So it's a yeah. lot in for, wow. for my legs without some promise that they're going to like, you know, get juicy and pumped and, and make, you know, make me proud of them. Um, <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's going to be really hard to swing that one. I probably never will, especially when you consider I just I just invested like $16 on spray paint to church up the uh, Techno Jam knockoff that I bought on Marketplace a few months ago. <laughs> uh, but, I'll just, you know, I can keep it on the wish list, right? 
Um, as far as like things that I'm probably going to buy, fuck, I don't know, man. I am. I feel like I buy just about everything that's available for purchase. Um, and if it's not available, I'll figure out a way to fucking make it. Right. Um, it's probably safe to say that um, I'm going to throw some money away at some point this year. I just don't know what it will be. It changes like from one day to the next. If Rogue were to release that tricep bar that they gave to um, Bailey. Bailey, yeah, Dan Bailey. If they release that tomorrow, I'd probably pull the trigger on that. Or if Dan, if you want to sell yours, hit me up. Or did it have his name on it? I don't want to just got your name on it. But I it, think it did. Yeah, never mind. I'll, I'll <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're a cool dude, but you know, I don't, I'm not going to wear like your jersey either. <laughs> but um, I don't know, man. Like I said, it's always something. <laughs> have like a, a one thing that I'm just really itching you know I, I have to wait for like the right influencer to convince me that I need to spend money when I have it in my account and I have that itch to just buy something that I don't fucking need like all at the same time and then I'll just buy something dumb and be like guys I can't believe I just bought a kabuki bar even though I hate them you know but yeah I don't know what about you chip man what do you got on your wish list so I got, well, a couple of things over here. I got one, uh, number one thing on my wish list, which is probably not going to happen for a while, is I really want to squat max MD. I just really would like to get some extra volume in per week with squatting, but just right now my body can't handle it. Um, even when I'm, you know, fully healthy, I don't think my body can handle the amount of volume that I'd like to get in. Um, Are you going to try plus, it before you buy it at Home Gym Con? I do not <laughs> think I'm going to be able to try it before I buy it at Home Gym Con. <laughs> Um, I would love to, I definitely would like to try it out at some point before buying it, but I've researched it so much. I kind of know, you know, what to expect. You know what it's, yeah. Right. Um, but the cool thing is the newer version, you know, the standalone, which I really wanted a, a rack mounted one for a long time, but the standalone version does a lot more. Um, and I'm, if you've watched my Instagram page for five minutes, you know that I like to get multiple uses out of things if at all possible. Um, so I love the versatility of the new one. Um, and at some point I'd love to to add that here. But the thing with my gym is, again, I like kind of that clean look, not too cluttered, not too much stuff. And so I'm really kind of content with what I have. I've got some mutant, me mutant metal uh, stainless handles that should be here next week if they're on time with their 12 week lead time. Um, but the other thing that I'm planning to buy this year is um, surplus strength is coming out with some new spotter arms sometime in the near future. Um, I've been sworn to secrecy, uh, but I was told today that I can say that uh, they're going to be lighter, stronger, faster. Um, I've seen pictures of them. They're going to be really, really cool. So if anybody's listening is on, is thinking about buying some spider arms soon, I would say hang tight uh, until Jason gets those wrapped up and gets them released. Um, they'll be worth the wait. They're going to be really cool. And that's going to be number one on my list. As soon as they're released, I'll be ordering them that day. Did so, you say they're going to be faster? Faster so far <laughs> as, yes. <laughs> so far as spotters. Harder, better, I, faster, stronger. Yeah. Uh, are they going to take up less holes? Because we had a whole conversation about that last podcast, I think, was how big the Rogue one. I took up like five holes and you were looking for something that literally only took up like two holes. Is that uh, going to solve that? That's a good question. Uh, you have to reach out to Jason to get an answer on that. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. What about you, Keith? I know you love the clutter. Uh, one thing I definitely want to, I'm, I'm excited about home gym con is uh, I'm pretty sure Jake's going to bring a Mars bar. So I really want to try a Mars bar. Like I'm a big, S I'm a big SSB fan. I didn't like the transformer, but I do love low bar squatting and I like SSB. So it seems like it'd be a perfect bar for me. I just, I'm, before I spend $800, I'm going to try it first. Um, so that's that's definitely on my my the high the highest of my maybe list. And then one thing that I definitely want is I I want to upgrade a couple of my I want to upgrade my two other pairs of uh, uh, J cups. I've just got like two of the the basic entry level uh, monster J cups, and I really love the uh, the two inch uh, or the, the the not the two inch the standard monster sandwich J cups. Uh, I love them. I don't know like I. They, they work great with my duffalo. I don't, you know, I, I always have my, when, when I use my duffalo bar, I always have my, my spotter arms to where like they, they, you know, they work with the duffalo bar. So it still has that camber. So when you unrack it, they kind of like pivot out. Uh, so they work just as well with the sandwich styles. I don't know. I know a lot of people always push the the roller J cups, but I don't know. I, I don't know that I want to spend, hell, I'm still going to almost spend $400 for those, but I don't want to spend $500 for the ones with the roller. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of the guy that once I find something I like, I buy it in excess. And I so far, I really like the sandwich Jacob. So I wouldn't be surprised if I spend like 
seven hundred dollars and buy two more pairs this year. Yeah, that's or, probably why you and I, why you and I get along so well. I liked the Ghost Jacob so much, I bought a second fucking pair. And then I've also got sandwich, and then I have the monoliths also. I feel like I have so many options that it's <laughs> almost like it's just dumb. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm like, look, we'll throw these for this set, and not, 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 <laughs> not, not, that's what I feel like. I gotta, I gotta like spread it out a little bit. It's, it's, it's a little too much. That's but, how I'm on. That's that. That's how I'm on bars. Like I'll be like, okay, well, which of my six power bars do I want to use today? Right. Yeah. 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 I'm kind of like, which one should I get rid of next? Um, <laughs> All right, Eccles, man, you said you're disappointed in Titan. So what are you going to fucking buy? Well, the number one thing on my list is, you probably know, it's a fucking shed. It's a what? A shed. <laughs> my shed. shed. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's a big, that's a big, a big one. Big ticket item. So I'm thinking this spring, I'm going to kind of reevaluate the size, and maybe get another right. boat. Maybe that's I don't need as, did you, don't did you, as big as I thought I did. Did you see uh, those ones from Lone Star? They're like can be like shipped to you. So uh, yeah, the, the problem with my development in my city is it has to match my house. So uh, gotta be on a slab and it has to match the house. Which I mean is kind of nice because it's an eyesore. There's a house next to me that the the color is just a little bit different and it's so annoying. It's just a little bit off and it's so annoying to look at. So so hopefully I can find different sides there so can you talk about you that, that a little bit for those folks that might not be aware of what you're talking about what's that can you talk about your plans for the shed oh yeah those so might not know? yeah last i was at the, at the end of fall i had a contractor out here and i was going to build a four by 24 shed in my backyard to put the gym in and it was eight grand for concrete and 32 grand for the for the shed, so 40 grand total. And I had to decide within a week because it was gonna start freezing. I was like, well, that's that's too quick. I can't pull the trigger on 40 grand in a week. So <laughs> I decided to put that on the back. So I might go a little smaller in the spring. I decided I probably don't need that big. <laughs> how How is that space compared to what you have now? Well, I'm in, a, in, a, in an 11 by 13 room right now. So it wow. would have been like three and a half times bigger. <laughs> So you get that that much more space, and then I got to spend that much more money. Yeah, on you got to fill it up, exactly. right? And all of a sudden, you're down the road, and I'm just like Jason buying Prime everything. So, <laughs> yeah, and one item. <laughs> twenty twenty four by twenty four is only like five hundred and seventy six square feet, man. I don't know if I would spend forty grand to have something like. I mean, that's that's decent size, but shit, that's well. And but that's, also, like, do you, do you want to spend thirty two grand and only have a fucking four hundred square foot gym though? It's like. I don't know. I'd have well, to. I'd have to... The, well, that's the thing. It's all, you know, insulated, drywall, wired, everything mm -hmm. ready to. You know, it's not just a shell of a shed. It's mm -hmm. winterproof, weatherproof, yeah. climate controlled. So, adds value yeah. to the property. Yeah. 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 If I move, it can be like a mother-in-law suite or something in the backyard. Or if you get a different mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> And there a couple times already. <laughs> third, third time's a charm, right? Yeah. Right. All right. Uh, is that everybody? All right. Let's let's go to what's the biggest? This one is uh, kind of a tricky one, right? But what's the biggest problem that hasn't been solved for home gym owners yet? Keith, what do you got? So it's kind of funny um, my wife's gonna bust my balls because she always you know she is very supportive but my first instinct of an answer was dealing with an angry significant other that's always mad about how much space your gym takes up uh mm -hmm. mainly the backstory on that is like you know we've lived here for 12 years the first five years we didn't do anything in the basement except storage i built a home gym you know oh, seven eight years later she's kind of you know irritated that the entire basement's mine you know so it's just like well i mean you didn't do anything with it and then so she only gets mad when i kind of interject anything upstairs like if i if i have if i have any opinion about what happens upstairs she kind of gives me the whole you literally have the entire basement shut the fuck up so just for me basically just dealing with you know the fact that i was lucky enough to be able to take up over take up 50 percent of my entire house with a gym but like kind of having a tippy toe around that with my wife, because I know it's kind of a sore subject by how much it consumes of our household, even though it's, it's the basement, it's still half of the house. Yeah, but she so uses I, it too, so. 
So what was the solution you came up with? A lawyer? <laughs> that was a thing. It's, uh, it's something that hasn't been solved. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, she's she, she's 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 very supportive and a good sport. So uh, I know the, uh, one other thing. I guess I would say, at least in my and I know it's been you. It could be solved if with tens of thousands of dollars and you know soundboard and whatnot. But just like the the fact that you know a basement gym. And then she's right upstairs, you know, if she's not working out with me, she's upstairs just watching TV or chilling. Literally the only thing between us is just, you know, the, the floor, just the hardwood floor, just no carpet or anything. So, you know, I'd literally, and, and I don't own a drywall or anything. It, it's all like an open basement. So just the fact that even if I'm quiet and have earbuds in, it's still like the barbell, everything. And then I, when I have friends over and there's people deadlifting 700 pounds behind me, whatever, like it's the whole house shakes. So that's a, that actually is a pretty big problem. Uh, just, just, just overall noise. Uh, for the person upstairs, basically. I think I have a solution. I have the solution for you. So I did, I, I thought about this, right? Clearly we had a little bit of a heads up. I knew this question was coming. So I, like Keith, I took a poll and I also got an overwhelming mm -hmm. amount of feedback um, similar to what you're describing there. And I took it upon myself to create a little bit of a solution because like I said, if I can't, if there's not something I can buy, I'll fucking make it, right? So. I haven't like patented this or anything, right? So I'm gonna show it to you guys right here. Um, so don't steal my fucking idea, right? Bottom feeders, unless you're, if you're going to at least like tag me in it or something. <laughs> um, anyway, majority of the responses that I got tend to all kind of relate back to this idea of maybe either not having this like commercial feel or just being really loud and having, you know, your wife's upstairs and she's watching her murder shows or whatever and you're slamming 700 pounds around and all that stuff. So what I came up with, was a fucking garage edition lump of the lump. For all of you, all of you rookies, you're drinking your tank tops, you're drinking no. a, water, uh, a gallon of water jug or whatever, right? All your wife has to do is just flick on the lump alarm. Oh, wow. That's a fucking classic. So good. That is awesome. It's the first ever and only home gym edition lunk alarm. <laughs> I honestly thought you were just going to tell him to lift in the garage instead of the basement. Then it's not a problem. I, yeah. I thought it was going to be the battery's going to show me a pillow. We talked about that last time. I had to come up with something new. <laughs> the lonely yeah. hour. I love it. Yeah. So imagine the, the vibrations of the house when you're in the basement compared to, say, upstairs. Uh, definitely make the house shake before. So you could also use a lunk alarm. I could. I just want to know can I get that in a bright green? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I was very. I looked very specifically for this <laughs> model. Isn't your bonus room above the garage, or is it actually above the house? It's above the garage, but um, I mean, it's it's all connected. No, yeah. it's all connected. So my idea um, actually is kind of similar uh, to what we're talking about as far as just being in a non-traditional garage or a basement. Um, and it's weird because I guess we got these questions last week or week before, um, and this kind of randomly popped up a couple of times on Facebook in the last week, and it had me thinking. Um, what I like to see is a universal wall mount kit for affixing your rack to the wall. So Rogue is almost there. They have a Monster Light version um, that you can get with stringers. It's 275, I think, before shipping and tax. So call it 325, 330, which is, you know, a decent amount of money, um, you know, to be able to secure your rack. They sell flat feet extensions, but that takes up floor space. They have the uh, little mini feet, which again, takes up floor space. Uh, but a common question is, you know, what can I do to secure my rack besides bolting it to the ground? You've got people who don't want to drill holes in the garage floor. They don't want to drill holes in their bonus room floor, their spare bedroom floor. A lot more people are using spare bedrooms since COVID uh, for home gyms. Um, so if you could come up with an affordable, you know, even a stringerless option like Rogue has that would be universal, whether you've got one inch holes or five eighths or three quarters or whatever it is so that people could mount their racks to the wall, but it still be a full rack. Um, I think that'd be a great opportunity to be able to solve a problem for a lot of people. I couldn't really come up with a whole lot for this one myself. Mm -hmm. And the biggest problem we all have probably right now is the way things are going. Is cost is just getting out of control. And if there was a way 
for the costs to start going back down, which I know isn't going to happen, but that's probably the biggest problem right now. We should just pray to make more money. <laughs> right. It's a price and cost of shit to go down. Yeah, like if I get a new job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, then you wouldn't care. <laughs> then you get a 28 by 28 shed. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I should just move to a place that already has a big shed. So. Yeah. Or, or a bigger basement. Yeah. I have a, oh, I feel like, like I pigeon my, pig, pigeonholed myself in this house with all the like custom modifications that I've made. Like everything is like to my comfort level. Like I've got instant hot water in places where it should be fucking hot as soon as you turn it on and like <laughs> tankless hot water and air conditioning and heating in the garage and everything. You know, it's I, the next, any house that I buy after this is good. I'm just gonna fucking start all over and making it my own. You know what I mean? It's taking a long time to get it here. So that that's the downside of like, for me, of the idea of like, well, I can buy a place with a little bit bigger space, but then it's like, I give up all this cool shit that I've done to my house that nobody else is going to appreciate when they go to like value it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think one of the thing, one of the things that drives me crazy, I got a buddy that I work with that I, I got him into buying some stuff. He's got a 48 by 48 shed. He's got a rack, power blocks and a functional trainer. And he like refuses to buy anything else. And it pisses me off that he has so much space. It just does not want to fill it. I don't know, man. The space is nice. Like I'm like, since I've sold my six post rack and stuff, like I just don't, I just, for me, the style of lifting that I do, like I'm not a power lifter. I'm not a strong man. I don't, I don't need, I realize now, like I don't need a big ass fucking rack to like for my 150 pound bench and squat. You know what I mean? Like I ain't dying under there and I'm good with like, for like my new, my current setup and stuff with the space that I have, like, I just come out here and just look at, I used to come out here and just like stare at my rack like a nerd. Now I just stare at the space, I'm like jumping jacks, you know, <laughs> not really. I do, I like, I really do like enjoy the space that I have here and what this is, what this thing is provided for that. So now whenever I look and I see these people with like a bedroom gym with a fucking six post rack in it and they're like inching by to put weights on and stuff, I'm like why? And you know what I mean? Like I, I get it if you're like, you know, really putting up fucking numbers or something like that you know what i mean but just for what like my type of lifting i don't know you know what i mean which i think is probably what a lot of people do you know what i mean it's just like you know high rep kind of stuff and maybe push yourself every now and again but for the purpose of, of being able to lift heavier for your higher rep stuff um but you know i don't know i guess it's just, I see that a lot. And I'm like, I don't understand why everybody has these big ass fucking six plus racks anymore. Even so though I used to have one. So that's, um, a, that's a, so that's the thought though, coming back to what I said earlier, how many of those people bought the six post rack for their bedroom because they wanted something they didn't have to bolt down. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like they buy I mean, them because we, we go online and we look at YouTube and we see Coop saying, you got to have the six post back, you know, whatever. And then you're like, oh, I need a, I want the one that's going to last me my lifetime. And if I ever <laughs> bounce, I'm going to want to have a six post rack. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know. I mean, that was, that was how I got there. You know, I was yeah. like, well, I need, this. I had like the wall mount and then I, I didn't like having two posts with all my shit on it. So I added two more and then I had, I wanted to do the slinger thing with the, weight stacks and I basically was trying to build the Aries, you know, like a couple years early and um, it just wasn't, you know, that that's how I ended up getting mine the way it was and it wasn't until I had this epiphany that I was like, I can just, if I'm going to redo all this shit, I might as well like redo it the, and fix the things that I hated about my other setup and whatever and it's been like a blessing to just forget all the fucking like social media influence telling me I need a six post rack or an eight post rack with wings and a fucking nut sack on the side and all that. You know what I mean? Like it was, it, it, it was like eye opening for me to, to just kind of, I mean, it was nice to have a couple of years of like figuring out what worked for me and what I really needed. And, and it was great during the pandemic to be able to like buy things, try them and get rid of them and not really lose money yeah. and, and that kind of stuff, you know, to, to really, kind of pin down what I need and where I'm at now. It's like, I feel like I just, I, I look in here a lot of like, I've still got a lot more than I really, I mean, I feel like, I don't know, 13 barbells or something stupid like that. And three of them are power bars. I don't need that, but I, you know, probably buy another one. 
So that's where I, that's how I started though. So I started with the with that Titan T2. I got I specifically got, got the flat foot rack because mm. I was going to have it in a spare bedroom. Um, and if I knew then what I know now, maybe I would have gone with the T3 um, just because I've got a buddy of mine who moves some decent weight in a T3 that's not bolted down and he hasn't died yet. But I just didn't want to go that route. And then whenever they came out with the 10 inch extension, uh, which is kind of funny when you like look at it, it's like, is that really enough space? And it marginally is depending on how you have the weight post set up. Um, having the weights on the rack just not taking up that floor space of a plate tree. For me, though, that's yeah. I, I love that. Um, yeah. And so that's a big advantage of the six post for me. But I definitely get where you're coming from. But that's why I went with the RM5, you know, the 30-inch front instead of the full 43 because right. I wanted right. that six post stability with a smaller footprint. Right. So, yeah, yeah I, I get where you're coming from, though. Yeah. Yeah, I like I, – my setup before had weights on the wall, those, like, Titan wall mount weight things. Mm -hmm. So kind of like – kind of the same concept as like the wing you know what i mean it's it's really efficient for like load it you just pull it off the wall and turn you know what i mean to like load it onto your barbell and stuff that is that is nice i've got the way i have it now it's similar i mean it's it's on the rack you know stored on the rack or whatever um instead of the wall but instead of having to pivot now i just go straight off of one and one of the other um or whatever so i i know what you mean there about storing your weights on the on the rack it is nice to be able to do that i have those on my half rack have you guys seen, uh, I think his name's Scott Holmes, maybe he's got the stainless steel RM4. Yeah. You might know what I'm talking about. And he's got yeah. the rep weight posts like lagged into the wall with the plate storage on the wall on either side of the rack. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find his page and send it to you. It's, it's a really, really clean setup in a very small space and looks nice. Yeah, cool. I mean, the only reason I have the six post I saw two uprights for sale on Marketplace for a hundred bucks. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> might as well. Yeah. And my mine has to be out away from the wall a certain bit because I have the mounted reverse hyper on here. Oh yeah. But adding the two posts didn't my rack out anymore. So it's still the same footprint it was before. And now I just have more places to put stuff. It just basically have it on there for storage. Yeah. All right, so Jake, we were supposed to come up with a couple of questions that we were going to ask you, or well, we weren't supposed to. Keith had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had and, you guys, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, you weren't really going to get a choice, so I I didn't um, I didn't put a lot of thought into it. But earlier we were in a conversation, and I didn't get your perspective on it, and I was curious. A bald guy who shaves his head by choice, is that a real bald guy or is that a fake bald guy because he could grow his hair out if he wanted to? One right answer here, Jake, come on. I would say real bald guy. That's the look there they want. Go. That's the look they want. They, they can be called bald. Uh, Adam <laughs> Pittman is a real yeah. bald guy then, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. I, was asking, I was asking Chip whether or not like bald guys <laughs> look at other bald guys differently you know like do you look at oh, yeah, yeah. You, know, like, <laughs> you don't have to be here yeah <laughs> yeah we can't ride in the car together three or four of us but you chose this. so i got a question for you jake what's number one on your wish list wish list oh man these are that's hard if you don't have it thought about um I would say if that um, posterior chain developer from Bulletproof ends up being legit, that would be the number one thing I would want to add. That thing looks cool. awesome. Yeah. So that and let's see. Well, hopefully he brings that to home gym con. He said he might. We'll see. <laughs> Unless I get a shed, I don't have room for it, but it'd be cool. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would just have to get rid of like the ski erg or something. <laughs> Quick question for you. Is there any, anything that you're, uh, you've been informed on something cool new that's coming out that the public doesn't know about yet? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you privy to any private information? You don't have to tell us what the information is. You, you have to tell us now. No. <laughs> you can edit it out. Honestly, I don't think so. 
I don't think so. Um, well, didn't we, uh, wasn't there uh, news that some stuff is supposed to be getting unveiled at Home Gym Con too? Yeah, there's definitely going to be some like products that are released to the world. I don't know specifically what they are though. So, but that's pretty cool. I don't believe you. I don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm being honest. Great question. How, yeah. <laughs> How about like a, a five minute or less? Like I, I, you might have touched base on a little bit on some of the other podcasts, but just like the garage gym experiment timeline. So you at all, I'm assuming. So, you know, you got out of college, you were, a, you know, you played football, you were a lifter, you had a home gym, you started an Instagram page. Did you, what, did you already have a home gym? And, you know, you were like, I can, I, did you, did you, did the, did your personal Instagram evolve into garage gym experiment or What's uh, just, just give us like, you know, we don't know anything about garage gym experiment five minutes. We'll catch us up. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily like to talk about myself too much, but, um, that's just not what me, are, but what are you comfortable with. We're curious. Oh no, I'll, I'll say it. I mean, it's pretty simple. Um, I you know I was working in marketing and let's just, I think it was, I, I moved into my first home. It was probably, you know, what, what year is it? Probably eight years ago or so. I think a year into it, I had started like a basic gym within my um, like guest or front room, like just a spare bedroom that we had. It was like hand-me-down stuff that I had like in the house, like old Dick's uh, set up, you know, 300 pound weight and some other just like kind of broken stuff um had kid my daughter number one I didn't but my wife had a kid <laughs> and I just remember like I was your typical commercial gym goer I went to LA fitness for many years and I would go at like 5 a.m I would go to work right after I'd come home get home at like six and see my daughter for the first time and you know babies go to bed at like 6:30. So I'd hardly hardly ever see her. I was like, I this just feels wrong. So I uh, started utilizing the home gym a little bit more, you know, just buying buying a thing or two at a time. I I had always like wanted to kind of do something entrepreneurial. I I mean, I had started a few other pages. Oh, I can't even I can't even think of the names right now, but it was like it was one of my uh was one of my candle page like Kaizen? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, you know, you kind of start like a, a page and it just fizzles out. You never go all the way in. And I can't, I can't even remember what they were. Um, but I had like one, I was like Indianapolis fitness, but it wasn't, it was going to be like a page for Indianapolis fitness. It just kind of fizzled out. Um, I think I had an, oh, 5 a.m. weights. I thought I was going to do something for like morning workouts. You know how like um, Corey Gregory has 4 a.m. club, 4 a.m. club, um, something along those lines. But like, you know, if you don't go all in, it just fizzles out. So, you know, uh, started the home gym, started seeing value. And I was just like, this is really helping my life. Started a, or I saw like there wasn't much out there at all. Uh, I think Coop, Coop was out he, there. He probably had like 10,000 followers, but like, when I looked into it, I had no idea like who any, like I wasn't in the world. Uh, so this was like six years ago. There wasn't really a world. Um, so um, I just started something. I remember like, I do remember a few years before I went to my first Arnold and I was like, there's a lot of like niche companies uh, like this. It's kind of cool. So I, that, I think I would say that's like what really inspired me. Uh, that first trip to the Arnold. And then, you know, I just started it, did something every day, started a blog. The blog was first, then Instagram. And then it just like one thing led to another, led to another. And then, um, you know, COVID happened, blew up a little bit more. And, uh, you know, I, I say that six years later. And like, you know, if you do everything first, or if you do something every day for six straight years, you know, this is kind of what you get. Um, so there was definitely a little bit of luck as far as just like 
it turned out into be something that I really enjoyed doing. Um, so like I was lucky enough to find that. Um, I always like really liked business. So it was like, that was part of it. I wanted to make it a, a, a business. And then co like COVID definitely boosted it, but um, they're just like, when COVID started, there wasn't um, much else out there. So um, anyone who was like kind of already there at COVID just blew up even further. So, but I do think around COVID I had like 60 or 70,000 followers by then. Uh -huh. So, so yeah, that's kind of the story. Um, but it was more like every year you kind of, you kind of make mistakes, but you add a different product to it. Like you know, I've always tried to do things a little bit different than what everybody else does. You know, like one year figured out Sunday surveys. Oh, people like that next year, um, figure out a newsletter year after that, figure out a podcast. And then year after that, hopefully this event goes well. So, um, yeah, it's just been a, that's kind of the storyline. You have gone full time with garage gym experiment, right? Like you're, are you, okay. That's what I thought. Do you, do you, do you want to, do you mind disclosing way? I, I'm not sure like when you were able to cut ties with like, you know, having a, a yeah. steady pay, paycheck and like a year and a half ago. Okay. Like okay, awesome. That's so cool. 2021. Yeah, there can't be there can't. paycheck. Is that what you said? Uh, that's <laughs> there can't be that many guys out there. When did you? No, that's just not having money. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, what else did I have? Da, 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 da. Does your family understand? Like, so, like the fact that that is your full time gig now. Like, like I, I'm sure your wife does, but like your parents, your cousins, your grandparents, like, like just people that aren't really on Instagram. Like, what are they? Like, how do you explain what you do for a living and like how it, like, is a thing? Yeah. So I think <laughs> I, I would say like that's almost the hardest battle throughout the last six years. I don't think it was really until like I said right, we're gonna do an event that they're like oh kind of makes sense now so like but still no one no one completely gets it I think my wife kind of does now <laughs> um <laughs> hope so hopefully <laughs> you know I like like no it's definitely not something that anybody along the years was like oh yeah I get it or you know you'd get like con you'd get um like from a business perspective um, my friends would make comments like, oh, like, glad you found something you're having fun doing. Like, you know, they just like looked at it as a hobby, but in reality it was like my job, my, my passion, my life outside of my family. So, so yeah, but no, that's a great question. No one ever understood. And especially that, I mean, that's the other thing you like, when you have like, you, you say you're trying to build something and like you have like 400 Instagram followers and like, you know, I didn't tell anybody, like I didn't tell anybody anything because I, I knew like I would, I probably wouldn't be incredibly proud about it. So, yeah. I think where the confusion might be is how you make money on Instagram, if you're not one of those females with like the big, thick, juicy ass <laughs> that they, you know, take <laughs> shots of themselves in the in the gym, <laughs> and stuff. That's where the that's where I'm probably like, all right, buddy, I'm glad you're having fun yeah. on Instagram. Yeah, and but, but you're doing something you enjoy. You, well, the thing is, you don't really make money on Instagram unless, like, right. you have to have a solid website or you have to have a YouTube. I think another thing, like. Or a solid backside. Or a solid backside. Mm -hmm. Like another thing. People buying barbell bombs. Which yeah. Is like, yeah. I was going to say another thing with that like three year story is I was in the negative for the first three years. You know, you doing all of this and trying to explain to like your family like, oh, no, I'm not actually making any money. Right. Yeah. So um, that's also part of it. And also what makes it makes it something like if you want to do it, you have to be like, there's definitely perks of just like trying to create content as a hobby. Whereas if you want to make it your job, that puts a lot of pressure on you. So, right. uh, and might take the fun out of it. So, 
this is something for everybody. It's work, yeah, it's work at that point, right? Yeah. Right. It's, it's work. It's work. Oh, for sure. Right. How much fun would you say is? Liberal. How much fun would you say is say like like how are you happy with it? Like six days a week, and there's just that one day that some asshole just got in your DMs and pisses you off, or you pretty much every day kind of like I'm pretty happy. I'm very happy. It doesn't mean that it's not a grind. And like, if you're a, if you're doing, if you're a one man show, you're doing a lot of like grunt work on the back end, like, yeah, right, writing newsletter, like proofreading articles and writing newsletters and uh, <clears throat> doing just a lot of like stuff that is right. Like, it's just no matter what you're doing, it's not going to be incredibly fun. Um, responding with like fire emojis and <laughs> yeah. getting into the comments yeah <laughs> so, functional right. trainers are overrated <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I don't mind reading the comments it's just like you just don't always know what to say so you end up like doing some Drop stupid it. fire emojis <laughs> back I, up. I, have, I have that problem like if I ever the times that I've gotten like more than two responses on a post that I made, um, I, if I go through them like at the same time, I'm like, I can't, I don't want to say the same thing over and over again. So then, it's like, then you just start dropping like right. these hands, whatever these mean. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. I yeah. Know Stuff like that. So, so make sure. I, so I, now we I'm know. Like, now we know that if Jake drops a, a fire emoji on your post that he really doesn't care. He's just yeah, <laughs> he doesn't point. think that's lit. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so, Bo, okay, so serious question though. If you had the opportunity, being in a garage gym and stuff in Indiana, if you had the opportunity to buy a garage <laughs> gym blood alarm, is that serious something question. That, <laughs> is that that's something you might stuff. be interested in? I mean, no. uh, I say we get with Avmat or somebody and get this thing going. <laughs> I don't that's, know. That's, if... That does seem like an Avmat product. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think so, guys. I kind of imagine it with something or something, and it's not. It's you're going to get hit. You're going to hit with a trademark. Copyright. Yeah, we'll yeah. Have to it. We'll have to change it to the junk alarm or something. <laughs> yeah. like I got another question for you. All right. Have you ever been contacted by Pillar Four Media <laughs> for a buyout? No, no. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we would be talking to the Pillar Four Media if so. <laughs> 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 no, be, no, no, no. Be three people removed by now. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like there's going to be some Pillar Four spies at Home Gym Con. Yeah, we'll spot them out. Uh, we call those scouts. Yeah. <laughs> I do know, like, they, like, I know people who aren't necessarily in the home gym space, but they've reached out to them, too. So, like, they are probably constantly just searching for people to add. That big pillar. Uh, it's man underscore who <laughs> underscore, <laughs> underscore <laughs> in gym. I like to say fuck a lot. You would, so you fuck. Problem. <laughs> you would sell out, wouldn't you, you fucker? I don't feel like I have anything for purchase. I mean, for sale. I don't know what the sell out is. I mean, I'm not really <laughs> like selling anything. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just. But yeah, if they were like, "Hey, we're going to pay you to keep saying the f word on no. the fucking podcast," then I'm like, okay. no. And in yeah. instead of pushing prime products, you're just going to have to push fucking you know the 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 top ten for best people bullshit. Yeah. Well, I, the. Prime products are like maybe the top 10 for, I don't know. Well, according to um, Nice Like Mike, he said it's for the one percenters. So if I can just oh. get with those people, I, I don't know. I don't really get along with them. So probably not. But, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like I am representative of what Prime had in mind either, you know. <laughs> in, in the like when I sent them a question, I sent them a video about just to make sure like on the little trolley thing it's really it's like on one of i had a post about this and guess like but um in the very bottom position it can get a little bit sloppy in one spot and so i'd sent them a thing to see if there was some way to like 
adjust it out or something. And the guy, the customer service guy was like working with, he had me and him and the, um, the uh, fucking engineer. The engineer, yeah, um, together. And they were like, we're trying to figure out what's going on with those knobs. We normally send them out with green knobs. How did you, did you mess with them? I don't know. I took those off immediately. Uh, no, those are normal. Those are mine. And he's like, oh, oh, okay, okay. I'm just making sure that we didn't need to send you some some replacement knobs. And I'm like, no. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, they probably hadn't, I didn't think about that, but they, you know, probably don't see very often somebody just fucking rape their um, <laughs> little machine there you know, of the of the green. You think they have to know though, if they like oh, just offered a, a, a black or a stainless or whatever, anything other than fucking you know, chip green. Sorry, like not. It's, not, it's, it's not the same green. green. No, it's Is not it the different? same green. It's okay. different. Yeah. Well, it's, it was, regardless, yeah. like, like who fucking it's, puts? I mean, I don't know. It, that well, it's it's fuck. It's green. Just ask me, right? Well, so Isn't that's that the thing, that's though. That's how I ended up like with just the green rack <clears> and the green trim on the deadlift platform, and nothing else is really green because I really like the road green, but there is it's a Pantone powder coat and everything else, all the other companies use RAL powder coats. So if you want to get a bright green RAL powder coat from Prime or Surplus or Mutant Metals or anywhere like that, it's going to be, or Sornex, it's going to be a different bright green than what Rogue has. And so that's how I got where I am with what I have. I think I have seven different oranges in the cellar and it, it, it does definitely annoys me, but I can't just keep repainting everything, you know. Like I, I think I like the rogue orange the, the least, but I'm not gonna repaint a fucking three thousand dollar rack or whatever. It's just like, so I'm kind of stuck with that one, and everything else is a little brighter. I was gonna say it's, it's a little bit darker than everything else, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the 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 burnt orange of the rogue is kind of like almost like a like a dark pumpkin, you know, where everything else is like 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 safety orange. So it kind of is what it is, but. Like too upset with it. it sounds like a Halloween horror film, The Dark Pumpkin. <laughs> uh, to... Yeah, black. I, I tried to get this in clear. And I, they, they had like four, 4,100 different color options or something stupid like that, all from Aria, like um, Chip just mentioned. Uh, but clear was not one of them. But the finish on this thing is actually nice, man. It's really like resilient. It's not like the Rogue monster line stuff that you know scuffs when you drop a bolt on it or something like that like, it really is like i actually i can say it out loud now because um everything's all said and done but this whole half side i had some rogue stuff hanging on the wall over there and this whole half side while i was assembling it just fucking i just lost it and it fell and landed with weights and everything in it against the wall and i didn't do any damage at all to the finish on this thing but it the the rogue stuff that was hanging on the wall took quite a fucking chunk i mean um just a testament to that whatever they fin whatever finish they use on this is better than whatever is on the um the monster so whatever Definitely. i never cared about that shit before like when i had the monster light thing like uhmw when i first got it, it wasn't even an option and i just didn't i mean i really didn't care like part of the clear the appeal to the to the clear i like the raw steel look but i also thought you know i was like i don't really you know i mean if it's going to get all scratched up and stuff it'll look cooler it'll have you know better aging and wear and stuff like that on a clear rack but that's not true because the clear just looks like white fucking scrapes and stuff but it just it was one of those things that was just going to happen i didn't care now that i have like everything is lined in uhmw and then there's more uhmw over the uhmw i'm like a puss about all of, with everything I'm like, <laughs> you're like just baby so, it up. yeah pretty much but um but but with like the 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 plunge pan and stuff like on the trolley thing up and down i mean i'm not a i'm not babying that thing in and out and i haven't seen any signs of wear on that so i don't know maybe it won't be as as um temperamental i guess as what i'm used to with the with the rogue uh, but, all right well yep is that gonna do it guys i think so good stuff right. guys thanks for having me good stuff guys yeah fuck that Thanks. was good Oh, it was a pleasure.